as far as finishing Markov chains. Let's first uh, do an example with a transition matrix and some initial probability distribution. And let's start with a with a random walk example in two dimensions. So let's say we're moving randomly between nodes along the following paths. And, um, Let's, let's give these nodes names, just one, two, three, four, five. And let's say on a transition, well, let's say that on a transition, we always move and all the paths we can take are equally likely. So if we start at one, <coughs> we transition to three with probability one, because we have to go somewhere and three is the only node connected to one. Likewise, if we start at 2, we end up at 4 with probability 1. I have to go somewhere. 4 is the only place we can go from 2. From 3, we can go to 1 or to 4 or to 5. And as I say, we'll treat all transitions as equally likely. So if there are three possibilities, they all have a probability of one third. From four, we can go to two or to three or to five. And because we've said all probabilities are equally likely, they all have a chance of one third of happening. From five, we can go to three or we can go to four and those have a probability of one to half. And then there are a bunch of probabilities that I'm not writing down because they're zero. Like the probability of going from one to five is zero. And let's ask a question. We start either at one or two, and we'll say we're equally likely to start at either of those places, and we move seven times. What? is the probability we end up at five. Let me 
you get the calculator warming up, we're going to need it. So, to do a problem like this, we need the transition matrix, an idea we just got into at the end of class on Thursday. Um, if we can find the transition matrix A, we can take A, raise it to the seventh power, multiply it by the initial probability distribution, which is that we are in state one or state two with equal probability, and therefore not in states three, four, and five. And after we do this multiplication, we'll get a vector. And to know the probability that we're in state five, we just look at the fifth entry of the vector. So, this matrix A will be five by five. Its rows and its columns represent states. And remember how this works, the column is the from state, the row is the to state. So if we're in state one, the probability that we go from one to three is one. So from one to three, and all of the other probabilities are zero. Then if we're in state two, we go to state four with probability one. And we go to any other state with probability zero. If we're in state three, we go to one or four or five with probability one third. One third, one third, one third. The unwritten probabilities are zero. If we're in state four, we go to two or three or five with probability one third. And other states with probability is zero. If we're in state five, we go to state three or state four with probability one half. State three or state four with probability one half. So we just take this matrix raise it to a power, multiply by that vector. This, by the way, I hope our calculator isn't 
I, our calculator should be able to do this, but this connects to something I said earlier about how raising to large powers, um, raising matrices to large powers can be difficult for your calculator and how it can be an application of the diagonalization. So, I'm going to share this for the online students, and I'm going to have my in-class students, let's see, going down, or what happened, let's see, going across, what's the first row? Should be zero, 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 uh, no, no. So the first one should be zero, then the second one zero, then the third one should be one third, and then zero, and then zero, and then it should be zero, 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 one half, zero, and one, zero. Zero, one third, one half, and yep, and then zero, one, one third, zero, one half, and zero, zero. One third, one third, zero. Okay, and I think if that's that, what's in our notes, we did something wrong. I think that the four to the two, so fourth column to the second row should be one third. Yes. So that point five should be one third above it, yeah. Okay. So this is now is a stochastic matrix. All of these rows add up to one. This vector, we're in state one or state two with equal probabilities. And now we'll take A, we'll raise it to the seventh power, we'll multiply it by B, and here's our probability distribution. And to answer the specific question we were asked, the probability that we end up in state 5 is 0.182, give or take a little rounding error. So we can do questions like this. Um, let's talk now about Markov chains as they relate to eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, so, I mean, we waited until now to talk about these for a reason. It's because they're related to some Chapter 5 material. And let's introduce this concept with an example, a commercial example. British Airways wants to know if its customers 
come back to them. That is, if someone flies British Airways once, is that person likely to use British Airways again for their next flight? Or are they going to use a competitor? So, it um, sends out surveys, does sales analysis, and it finds that if a customer uses British Airways once, then they will use British Airways again for their next flight 85% of the time. Whereas they will use a competitor, C for competitor, for their next flight 15% of the time. If they use a competitor, if they fly with a competitor, they could always decide to then transition to British Airways for their next flight. Maybe they have a 10% chance of doing that. Or a competitor or somebody who flies with a competitor could continue to fly with a competitor with a 90% chance. So this is a Markov chain and we can look we can look at the transition matrix. I always jot down the states in front and above the matrix, prevents any sort of little mistakes from happening. Point 85, point 15, point 10, point 90. And let's ask a question. Suppose a certain customer is currently 60%, well, Let's continue to use probabilities, I suppose. I know I used the word percent when I was writing stuff down here. But suppose a certain customer has a 0 0.4 chance of choosing British Airways and a 60%, so a 0.6 chance of choosing a competitor. After this person's next flight, what is the new probability D 
distribution. Well, this is just a uh, matrix vector multiplication, right? You have a um, probability distribution, you have a Markov chain, you want to know what the new probability distribution will be after one step. It's this Markov transition matrix. We're only, we're asking what happens after one transition, after one flight. So this is being raised to the first. And we're multiplying by 0.4, 0.5, Continue to have no idea what selecting text does. Well, leave it be. Thought it might be nice to change the color and differentiate it a little from that stuff above it. But we can go to our calculator. I mean, we could also just do this by hand, I guess. It's a small matrix, but 0 0.85, 0 0.15, 0 0.25, 0 0.90. And for B, it's now 2 by 1, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. And we multiply A by B, and we get 0.4.6. So what's happened here is that there's been a transition, but our probability distribution remains the same. That person was 40% likely to travel with British Airways, 60% likely to travel with a competitor. They travel, they take a flight, and they're still 40%, 60%. In terms of linear algebra, what's happened here is that we've taken a matrix and we've multiplied it by a vector and we've gotten the vector back again. If we put a 1 in front of the vector, it should be clear that this vector, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, is an eigenvector, and that lambda equals 1 is an eigenvalue. Theorem. Every Stochastic, that's a fancy term that we defined, but in this context, I'm talking about Markov transition matrices. Every transition matrix has lambda equals one as an eigenvalue and 
lambda equals 1 has a stochastic, there's that word again, eigenvector. So remember what a stochastic eigenvector, well, what a stochastic matrix in general is. Um, all of the entries are between 0 and 1 inclusive, and the, um, all of the columns add up to 1. So, I mean, this is a stochastic matrix. It's a stochastic eigenvector. Every, I mean, if I'm talking about a vector storing a probability distribution, that vector has to be stochastic. Probabilities are between 0 and 1, and probabilities add up to 1. So, This stochastic eigenvector, because it's stochastic, this is a valid probability distribution. And it has a name. It's called the steady state. Steady state, because if something is steady, it's consistent. It doesn't change in a hurry. The steady state doesn't change at all. No matter how many transitions occur, this probability distribution remains fixed. So, I mean, here, I asked what happens after this person's next flight, but I could have asked what would happen after this person has flown 20 more times. And the answer would have remained the same, 0.4.6. So every Markov chain has a steady state. I use that word every and I meant it. Here we're going to make a weaker claim and we're kind of right at the border of what is appropriate for an undergraduate linear algebra class. So I'm just going to use the word many here and not get into the nitty gritty details. But many Markov chains have the property that any probability distribution converges to the steady state over time. And this probably needs some 
clarifying comments, but I just want to circle that and emphasize that this is not a property that all Markov chains have. It's a property that a lot of Markov chains have. Um, but what does it mean? Converges to the steady state over time. Well, let's continue to look at this British Airways example. So we have this as our transition matrix. Check that, yes. And let's say we have some probability distribution. So give me a number between zero and one. Logan. Uh, 0.3. So there's a randomly select initial probability distribution. Let's go to our calculator. Let's clear all this out. Let's put it in. It did not like that. Must have pressed the wrong button. Try this again, 0 0.3, 0 0.7. So we can take A and we can multiply it by this probability distribution. So after this person has flown once, this is their new probability distribution. 0.325 chance that they're flying with British Airways. 0.675 chance that they're flying with a competitor. We can ask what happens if they fly a second time. Well, that's just multiplying by A again. If they fly a second time, they're flying with British with a 0.34375 chance, flying with a competitor with a 0.65625 chance. What if this person flies often? Like, what if this person is taking a bunch of business flights and flies, like, two times a month? So, they fly 24 times in a year. What's the probability distribution after the end of the year? Well, it's A to the 24th. times B. Ah, yes, I can see why that didn't work. Let's try this again. It's A to the 24th times B. So this is really really close to um, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, or maybe really, really close is an exaggeration, but it is quite close, up to uh, the fourth decimal place. This is 0 0.4, 0 0.6. We could 
assuming that our calculator is not going to object to raising this matrix to such a large power, we could ask what happens after two years. And now we're even closer to point four point six. Now we're, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, up to six decimal places. So as we have more and more transitions, the probability distribution of this flyer is getting closer and closer to the steady state, to 0.4.6. Hence, the statement that probability distributions converge to their steady state. And any, for this particular Markov chain, any initial probability distribution would have done this. I was not worried that Logan would select a number that broke the example. There were no initial distributions that would do anything other than this. So, you can sort of see, we don't want to get into details, but you can see why, um, or we can explain why not every Markov chain can possibly have this property. And I mean, here's a kind of goofy Markov chain. It has two states, and those two states are totally um, unconnected. So we have a state one and a state two. Let me fix that. And if we're in state one, we stay in state one with probability one. And if we're in state two, we stay in state two with probability one. So these two non-interacting states. And I mean, the matrix of this Markov chain is this. It has one as an eigenvalue, just like I said it should. And this, well, this is kind of a weird example. But for this Markov chain, um, any probability distribution is a steady state. Literally every vector is an eigenvector here. I mean, except for the zero vector. So let me write that. Any probability distribution is a steady state. I mean, point two, point eight. If you start here with a probability of point two, you stay here forever. If you start here with a probability point eight, you stay here forever. This probability distribution is a steady state. Any probability distribution is a steady state. This is obviously 
significantly different from this British Airways example, where there is a single steady state and every probability distribution converges to that steady state. So it's certainly possible to create Markov chains that don't have this nice property. And as goofy as this example was, it's certainly not a complicated example. We didn't have to do anything really weird to come up with a Markov chain that has this property, but as I say, many real-world Markov chains do have this property. And the reason I'm not being more specific um, is just pedagogical. There are, there are two properties that a Markov chain needs to have this property. One of them's easy to explain, the other's hard to explain. And in an undergraduate linear algebra class, I don't want to deal with the hard to explain property. It is in the online notes if anyone is really curious. That's it for Markov chains. I need to, there are, there are two, Mar I mean, there's one, but currently there are two Markov chain assignments sitting in my draft. So I need to take like 10 minutes, figure out what that's about, why there are two of them, which one I actually want students to do, but there is an assignment on this that will be available shortly. Because we've ended a section, let me end the recording.